Tutorial 12, Aviation Weather Services. This lesson will cover aviation weather services. Through a complex system of weather services, government agencies, and independent weather observers, pilots and other aviation professionals receive the benefit of this vast knowledge base in the form of up-to-date weather reports and forecasts. These reports and forecasts enable pilots to make informed decisions regarding weather and flight safety before and during a flight. There are four types of weather observations, surface, upper air, radar, and satellite. Surface Aviation Weather Observations, METARs, are a compilation of elements of the current weather at individual ground stations across the United States that provide continuous, up-to-date weather information. Automated weather sources, such as the Automated Weather Observing Systems, AWOS, Automated Surface Observing Systems, ASOS, Air Route Traffic Control Center, ARTCC facilities, as well as other automated facilities, also play a major role in the gathering of surface observations. Surface observations provide local weather conditions and other relevant information for a radius of five miles of a specific airport. This information includes the type of report, station identifier, date and time, modifier as required, wind, visibility, runway visual range, RVR, weather phenomena, sky condition, temperature dew point, altimeter reading, and applicable remarks. Although the reports cover only a small radius, the pilot can generate a good picture of the weather over a wide area when many reporting stations are looked at together. The ARTCC facilities are responsible for maintaining separation between flights conducted under instrument flight rules, IFR, in the en route structure. Center radars, air route surveillance radar, ARSR, acquire and track transponder returns using the same basic technology as terminal radars. Controllers can select the level of weather to be displayed. Observations of upper air weather are more challenging than surface observations. There are only two methods by which upper air weather phenomena can be observed, radio sonde observations and pilot weather reports, PIREPS. A radio sonde is a small cubic instrumentation package which is suspended below a six-foot hydrogen or helium-filled balloon. As it ascends, the instrumentation gathers various pieces of data, such as air temperature and pressure, as well as wind speed and direction. Pilots also provide vital information regarding upper air weather observations and remain the only real-time source of information regarding turbulence, icing, and cloud heights. This information is gathered and filed by pilots in flight. Together, PIREPS and radio sound observations provide information on upper air conditions important for flight planning. Many domestic and international airlines have equipped their aircraft with instrumentation that automatically transmits in-flight weather observations through the data link system to the airline dispatcher who disseminates the data to appropriate weather forecasting authorities. Weather observers use four types of radar to provide information about precipitation, wind, and weather systems. The WSR-88D NEXRAD radar, commonly called Doppler radar, shown top left, provides in-depth observations that inform surrounding communities of impending weather. Doppler radar has two operational modes, clear air and precipitation. In clear air mode, the radar is in its most sensitive operational mode because a slow antenna rotation allows the radar to sample the atmosphere longer. Precipitation targets provide stronger return signals. Therefore, the radar is operated in the precipitation mode when precipitation is present, which can be seen on the top right. Intensities are correlated to intensity terminology for air traffic control purposes, shown on the bottom. FAA Terminal Doppler Weather Radar, installed at some major airports around the country, also aids in providing severe weather alerts and warnings to ATC. Terminal radar ensures pilots are aware of wind shear, gust fronts, and heavy precipitation. The third type of radar commonly used in the detection of precipitation is the FAA Airport Surveillance Radar. 
This radar is used primarily to detect aircraft, but it also detects the location and intensity of precipitation, which is used to route aircraft traffic around severe weather in an airport environment. And the last type of radar is airborne radar. It is equipment carried by aircraft to locate weather disturbances. Advancement in satellite technologies has recently allowed for commercial use to include weather uplinks. Pilots now have the capability of receiving continuously updated weather across the entire country at any altitude. No longer are pilots restricted by radio range or geographic isolations, such as mountains or valleys. Shown on the left, SIGMETs are weather advisories issued concerning weather significant to the safety of all aircraft. SIGMET advisories can cover an area of at least 3,000 square miles and provide data regarding severe and extreme turbulence, severe icing, and widespread dust or sandstorms that reduce visibility to less than 3 miles. Shown on the right, AIRMETs are weather advisories issued only to amend the area forecast concerning weather phenomena which are of operational interest to all aircraft. AIRMETs concern weather of less severity than that covered by SIGMETs or convective SIGMETs. AIRMETs cover moderate icing, moderate turbulence, sustained winds of 30 knots or more at the surface, widespread areas of ceilings less than 1,000 feet and or visibility less than 3 miles, and extensive mountain obscurement. Service outlets are government or private facilities that provide aviation weather services. Major service outlets are the Automated Flight Service Station, or AFSS, the Transcribed Information Briefing Service, or TIBS, the Direct User Access Terminal Service, or DUATS, the En Route Flight Advisory Service, or FlightWatch, the Hazardous In-Flight Weather Advisory, or HIWAS, and lastly, the Transcribed Weather Broadcast, or TWEB. The AFSS is the primary source for pre-flight weather information. A pre-flight weather briefing from an AFSS can be obtained 24 hours a day by calling 1-800-WX-BRIEF from almost anywhere in the United States. The Transcribed Information Briefing Service is a service prepared and disseminated by selected AFSS. It provides continuous telephone recordings of meteorological and aeronautical information. Specifically, TIBS provides area and route briefings, airspace procedures, and special announcements. The Direct User Access Terminal Service, DUATS, which is funded by the FAA, allows any pilot with a current medical certificate to access weather information and file a flight plan via computer. The En Route Flight Advisory Service is specifically designed to provide timely en route weather information upon pilot request. Hazardous In-Flight Weather Advisory is a national program for broadcasting hazardous weather information continuously over selected navigation aids. The broadcasts include advisories such as AIRMETs, SIGMETs, convective SIGMETs, and urgent PIREPs. These broadcasts are only a summary of the information and pilots should contact an FSS or EFAS for detailed information. Shown above, navigational aids that have HIWAS capability are depicted on sectional charts with an H in the upper right corner of the identification box. Transcribed weather broadcasts are only available in Alaska and are recorded on tapes and broadcast continuously over selected low or medium frequency and very high frequency omnidirectional radio range navigation system facilities. Generally, the broadcast contains a summary of adverse conditions, surface weather observations, PIREPs, and a density altitude statement if applicable. At the discretion of the broadcast facility, recordings may also include a synopsis, winds aloft forecast, en route and terminal forecast data, and radar reports. Prior to every flight, pilots should gather all information vital to the nature of the flight. This includes an appropriate weather briefing obtained from a specialist at an FSS, AFSS, or NWS. For weather specialists to provide an appropriate weather briefing, they need to know which of the three types of briefings is needed. Standard, abbreviated, or outlook. 
Other helpful information is whether the flight is visual flight rules, VFR, or IFR, aircraft identification and type, departure point, estimated time of departure, ETD, flight altitude, route of flight, destination, and estimated time and route, ETE. A standard briefing is the most complete report and provides the overall weather picture. This type of briefing should be obtained prior to the departure of any flight and should be used during flight planning. A standard briefing provides the following information in sequential order if it is applicable to the route of flight. 1. Adverse conditions. This includes significant weather such as thunderstorms or aircraft icing or other important items such as airport closings. 2. VFR flight not recommended. If the weather for the route of flight is below VFR minimums, or if it is doubtful the flight could be made under VFR conditions due to the forecast weather, the briefer may state that VFR is not recommended. It is the pilot's decision whether or not to continue the flight under VFR, but this advisory should be weighed carefully. 3. Synopsis – An overview of the larger weather picture. Fronts and major weather systems that affect the general area are provided. 4. Current Conditions. This portion of the briefing contains the current ceilings, visibility, winds, and temperatures. 5. In Route Forecast. A summary of the weather forecast for the proposed route of flight. 6. Destination Forecast. A summary of the expected weather for the destination airport at the estimated time of arrival. 7. Winds and Temperatures Aloft. A report of the winds at specific altitudes for the route of flight. The temperature information is provided only on request. 8. Notices to airmen. Information pertinent to the route of flight which has not been published in the NOTAM publication. 9. ATC delays. An advisory of any known ATC delays that may affect the flight. 10. Other information. At the end of the standard briefing, the FSS specialist provides the radio frequencies needed to open a flight plan and to contact EFAS. An abbreviated briefing is a shortened version of the standard briefing. It should be requested when a departure has been delayed or when weather information is needed to update the previous briefing. An outlook briefing should be requested when a planned departure is six hours or more away. It provides initial forecast information that is limited in scope due to the time frame of the planned flight. This type of briefing is a good source of flight planning information that can influence decisions regarding route of flight, altitude, and ultimately the go-no-go -go decision. Aviation weather reports are designed to give accurate depictions of current weather conditions. Each report provides current information that is updated at different times. Some typical reports are METAR, PIREPS, and Radar Weather Reports, SDs. Shown above is a METAR. A METAR is an observation of current surface weather reported in a standard international format. METARs are issued hourly unless significant weather changes have occurred. A special METAR, SPECI, can be issued at any interval between routine METAR reports. A typical METAR report contains the following information in sequential order. 1. Type of report, METAR. There are two different types of METAR reports. The first is the routine METAR report that is transmitted every hour. The second is the aviation selected SPECI. This is a special report that can be given at any time to update the METAR for rapidly changing weather conditions, aircraft mishaps, or other critical information. 2. Station Identifier, KGGG, a four-letter code as established by the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. Above shows the identifier for Gregg County Airport in Longview, Texas, K being the country designation, and GGG being the airport identifier. Alaska identifiers always begin with the letters PA and Hawaii identifiers always begin with the letters PH. 3. Date and time of report. 161753Z. Depicted in a six-digit group. The first two numbers stand for the day of the month. The last four stand for time converted to Zulu time, which is depicted at the end with a letter Z. 
for modifier, auto, denotes that the METAR came from an automated source or that the report was corrected. If the notation auto is listed in the METAR, the report came from an automated source. It also lists A01 or A02 in the remarks section to indicate the type of precipitation sensors employed at the automated station. When the modifier COR is used, it identifies a corrected report sent out to replace an earlier report that contained an error. 5 WIND 14021G26 reported with a five-digit code unless the speed of the wind is over 99 knots. The first three digits indicate the direction the true wind is blowing in tens of degrees. If the wind is variable, it is reported as VRB. The last two digits indicate the speed of the wind in knots. If the winds are gusting, the letter G follows the wind speed, followed by the peak gust recorded. 6. Visibility, 3 quarters SM. The prevailing visibility is reported in statute miles as denoted by the letters SM. It is reported in both miles and fractions of miles. At times, runway visual range, RVR, is reported following the prevailing visibility. RVR is the distance a pilot can see down the runway in a moving aircraft. When RVR is reported, it is shown with an R then the runway number, followed by a slant, then the visual range in feet. 7. Weather, plus TSRA, BR, can be broken down into two different categories, qualifiers and weather phenomenon. First, the qualifiers of intensity, proximity, and the descriptor of the weather will be given. The intensity may be light, minus, moderate, blank, or heavy, plus. Proximity only depicts weather phenomena that are in the airport vicinity. The notation VC indicates a specific weather phenomenon is in the vicinity of 5 to 10 miles from the airport. Descriptors are used to describe certain types of precipitation and obscurations. Weather phenomena may be reported as being precipitation, obscurations, and other phenomena such as squalls or funnel clouds. Descriptions of weather phenomena as they begin or end and hailstone size are also listed in the remarks section of the report. 8. Sky Condition BKN 008 OVC 012 CB Always reported in the sequence of amount, height, and type or indefinite ceiling height. The heights of the cloud bases are reported with a three-digit number in hundreds of feet AGL. The types of clouds, specifically towering cumulus, TCU, or cumulonimbus, CB clouds, are reported with their height. Contractions are used to describe the amount of cloud coverage and obscuring phenomena. The amount of sky coverage is reported in eighths of the sky from horizon to horizon. 9. Temperature and dew point, 18-17. The air temperature and dew point are always given in degrees Celsius. Temperatures below zero degrees Celsius are preceded by the letter M to indicate minus. 10. Altimeter setting, A2970, reported as inches of mercury, HG, in a four-digit number group, it is always preceded by the letter A. Rising or falling pressure may also be denoted in the remarks section as P-R-E-S-R-R -R or P-R-E-S-F-R, -R, respectively. 11. Remarks. The remarks section always begins with the letters R-M-K. Comments may or may not appear in this section of the METAR. The information contained in this section may include wind data, variable visibility, beginning and ending times of particular phenomenon, pressure information, and various other information deemed necessary. PIREPs provide valuable information regarding the conditions as they actually exist in the air, which cannot be gathered from any other source. Pilots can confirm the height of bases and tops of clouds, locations of wind shear and turbulence, and the location of in-flight icing. When unexpected weather conditions are encountered, 
pilots are encouraged to make a report to an FSS or ATC. When a pilot weather report is filed, the ATC facility or FSS will add it to the distribution system to brief other pilots and provide in-flight advisories. The image above shows the elements of a PIREP form. Item numbers 1 through 5 are required information when making a report, as well as at least one weather phenomenon encountered. Pilot reports are easily decoded, and most contractions used in the reports are self-explanatory. Areas of precipitation and thunderstorms are observed by radar on a routine basis. Radar weather reports, RAIREPs, or Storm Detections, SDs, are issued by radar stations at 35 minutes past the hour, with special reports issued as needed. RAIREPs provide information on the type, intensity, and location of the echo top of the precipitation, figure 12-11. These reports may also include direction and speed of the area of precipitation, as well as the height and base of the precipitation in hundreds of feet MSL. Cloud bases and tops, ceilings, and visibility are not detected by radar. The above radar report gives the following information. The report is automated from Oklahoma City and was made at 1935 UTC. The echo pattern for this radar report indicates a line of echoes covering most of the area. Thunderstorms and very heavy rain showers are indicated. The next set of numbers indicates the azimuth that defines the echo, 86 degrees at 40 nautical miles and 199 degrees at 115 nautical miles. The dimension of this echo is given as 20 nautical miles wide. 10 nautical miles on either side of the line defined by the azimuth and range. The cells within the line are moving from 240 degrees at 25 knots. The maximum top of the precipitation, as determined by radar and satellite, is 57,000 feet, and it is located on the 159 degree radial, 65 nautical miles out. The last line indicates the intensity of the precipitation, for example in grid QM, the intensity is 3, or heavy precipitation. 1 is light and 6 is extreme. A TAF is a report established for the 5 statute mile radius around an airport. TAF reports are usually given for larger airports. Each TAF is valid for a 30 hour time period and is updated four times a day at 0000 Zulu, 0600 Zulu, 1200 Zulu, and 1800 Zulu. The TAF utilizes the same descriptors and abbreviations as used in the METAR report. The TAF indicates the following information in sequential order. 1. Type of report, TAF. A TAF can be either a routine forecast, TAF, or an amended forecast, TAF AMD. 2. ICAO Station Identifier, KPIR. Same identifiers as a METAR report. 3. Date and time, 11, 11.30 Zulu. Date is the first two numbers, followed by the time being the last four numbers given in Zulu time. 4. Valid period, date and time, 11, 12, 12. The valid forecast time period is given by a six-digit number group. The first two numbers indicate the date, followed by the two-digit beginning time for the valid period, and the last two digits are the ending time. 5. Forecast wind, 15012KT. The wind direction and speed forecast are given in a five-digit number group. The first three indicate the direction of the wind in reference to true north. The last two digits state the wind speed in knots, as denoted by the letters KT. 6. Forecast visibility, P6SM, given in statute miles and may be in whole numbers or fractions. If the forecast is greater than 6 miles, it will be coded as P6SM. 7. Forecast Significant Weather Weather phenomena are coded in the TAF reports in the same format as the METAR. If no significant weather is expected during the forecast time period, the denotation NSW is included in the becoming or temporary weather groups. 8. Forecast sky condition, given in the same manner as the METAR. 
only cumulonimbus CB clouds are forecast in this portion of the TAF report, as opposed to CBs and towering cumulus in the METAR. 9. Forecast Change Group For any significant weather change forecast to occur during the TAF time period, the expected conditions and time period are included in this group. This information may be shown as from FM, becoming BECMG, and temporary tempo. FM is used when a rapid and significant change, usually within an hour, is expected. Becoming is used when a gradual change in the weather is expected over a period of no more than two hours. Tempo is used for temporary fluctuations of weather expected to last less than one hour. 10. Probability Forecast a given percentage that describes the probability of thunderstorms and precipitation occurring in the coming hours. This forecast is not used for the first six hours of the 24-hour forecast. The FA gives a picture of clouds, general weather conditions, and visual meteorological conditions, VMC, expected over a large area encompassing several states. There are six areas for which area forecasts are published in the contiguous 48 states. Area forecasts are issued three times a day and are valid for 18 hours. Area forecasts are typically disseminated in four sections and include the following information. 1. Header DFWC FA 120945 gives the location identifier of the source of the FA, the date and time of issuance, the valid forecast time, and the area of coverage. 2. Precautionary Statements IFR conditions, mountain obscurations, and thunderstorm hazards are described in this section. Statements made here regarding height are given in MSL, and if given otherwise, AGL or ceiling CIG will be noted. 3. Synopsis gives a brief summary identifying the location and movement of pressure systems, fronts, and circulation patterns. 4. VFR Clouds and Weather This section lists expected sky conditions, visibility, and weather for the next 12 hours, and an outlook for the following 6 hours. In-flight weather advisories, which are provided to en-route aircraft, are forecasts that detail potentially hazardous weather. An in-flight weather advisory is issued in the form of either an AirMet, SIGMET, or Convective SIGMET. AIRMETs WAs, are examples of in-flight weather advisories that are issued every six hours with intermediate updates issued as needed for a particular area forecast region. The information contained in an AIRMET is of operational interest to all aircraft, but the weather section concerns phenomena considered potentially hazardous to light aircraft and aircraft with limited operational capabilities. An AIRMET includes forecast of moderate icing, moderate turbulence, sustained surface winds of 30 knots or greater, widespread areas of ceilings less than 1,000 feet and or visibilities less than 3 miles, and extensive mountain obscurement. Each AIRMET bulletin has a fixed alphanumeric designator numbered sequentially for easy identification, beginning with the first issuance of the day. Sierra is the AIRMET code used to denote IFR and mountain obscuration. Tango is used to denote turbulence, strong surface winds, and low-level wind shear. And Zulu is used to denote icing and freezing levels. SIGMETs, WSs, are in-flight advisories concerning non-convective weather that is potentially hazardous to all aircraft. They report weather forecasts that include severe icing not associated with thunderstorms, severe or extreme turbulence or clearer turbulence, CAT, not associated with thunderstorms, dust storms or sandstorms that lower surface or in-flight visibilities to below 3 miles, and volcanic ash. SIGMETs are unscheduled forecasts that are valid for 4 hours. A SIGMET is issued under an alphabetic identifier from November through Yankee, excluding Sierra and Tango. The first issuance of a SIGMET is designated as an Urgent Weather SIGMET, UWS. Reissued SIGMETs for the same weather phenomenon are sequentially numbered until the weather phenomenon ends. A Convective SIGMET, 
WST, is an in-flight weather advisory issued for hazardous convective weather that affects the safety of every flight. Convective SIGMETs are issued for severe thunderstorms with surface winds greater than 50 knots, hail at the surface greater than or equal to 3 quarters inch in diameter, or tornadoes. They are also issued to advise pilots of embedded thunderstorms, lines of thunderstorms, or thunderstorms with heavy or greater precipitation that affect 40% or more of a 3,000 square foot or greater region. Convective SIGMETs are issued for each area of the contiguous 48 states, but not Alaska or Hawaii. Convective SIGMETs are issued for the Eastern, E, Western, W, and Central, C, United States. Each report is issued at 55 minutes past the hour, but special reports can be issued during the interim for any reason. Each forecast is valid for two hours. They are numbered sequentially each day from 1 to 99, beginning at 00Z time. If no hazardous weather exists, the convective SIGMET is still issued, however it states convective SIGMET none. Winds and Temperatures Aloft Forecasts, FD, provide wind and temperature forecasts for specific locations in the contiguous United States, including network locations in Hawaii and Alaska. The forecasts are made twice a day based on the radio sonde upper air observations taken at 0000 Zulu and 1200 Zulu. Wind direction is always in reference to true north and wind speed is given in knots. The temperature is given in degrees Celsius. No winds are forecast when a given level is within 1,500 feet of the station elevation. Similarly, temperatures are not forecast for any station within 2,500 feet of the station elevation. If the wind speed is forecast to be greater than 100 knots, but less than 199 knots, the computer adds 50 to the direction and subtracts 100 from the speed. If the wind speed is forecast to be 200 knots or greater, the wind group is coded as 99 knots. When the forecast wind speed is calm or less than 5 knots, the data group is coded 9900, which means light and variable. Weather charts are graphic charts that depict current or forecast weather. They provide an overall picture of the United States and should be used in the beginning stages of flight planning. Typically, weather charts show the movement of major weather systems and fronts. Surface analysis, weather depiction, and radar summary charts are sources of current weather information. Significant weather prognostic charts provide an overall forecast weather picture. The surface analysis chart, shown above, depicts an analysis of the current surface weather. This chart is a computer-prepared report that is transmitted every three hours and covers the contiguous 48 states and adjacent areas. A surface analysis chart shows the areas of high and low pressure, fronts, temperatures, dew points, wind directions and speeds, local weather, and visual obstructions. Surface weather observations for reporting points across the United States are also depicted on this chart. Each of these reporting points is illustrated by a station model. A station model includes 1. Type of observation. A round model indicates an official weather observer made the observation. A square model indicates the observation is from an automated station. 2. Sky cover. The station model depicts total sky cover and is shown as clear, scattered, broken, overcast, or obscured, partially obscured. 3. Clouds, represented by specific symbols. Low cloud symbols are placed beneath the station model, while middle and high cloud symbols are placed directly above the station model. Typically, only one type of cloud will be depicted with the station model. 4. Sea level pressure, given in three digits to the nearest tenth of a millibar, MB. For 1,000 millibars or greater, prefix a 10 to the three digits. For less than 1,000 millibars, Prefix a 9 to the three digits. 5. Pressure change tendency. Pressure change in tenths of millibars over the past three hours. This is depicted directly below the sea level pressure. 6. Precipitation. 
a record of the precipitation that has fallen over the last six hours to the nearest hundredth of an inch. Seven, dew point, given in degrees Fahrenheit. Eight, present weather. Over 100 different weather symbols are used to describe the current weather. Nine, temperature, given in degrees Fahrenheit. Ten, wind. True direction of wind is given by the wind pointer line, indicating the direction from which the wind is coming. A short barb is equal to five knots of wind, a long barb is equal to 10 knots of wind, and a pennant is equal to 50 knots. A weather depiction chart, shown above, details surface conditions as derived from METAR and other surface observations. The weather depiction chart is prepared and transmitted by computer every three hours beginning at 0100 Zulu time and is valid at the time of the plotted data. It is designed to be used for flight planning by giving an overall picture of the weather across the United States. This type of chart typically displays major fronts or areas of high and low pressure. The weather depiction chart also provides a graphic display of IFR, VFR, and MVFR, marginal VFR weather. Areas of IFR conditions, ceilings less than 1,000 feet and visibility less than 3 miles, are shown by a hatched area outlined by a smooth line. MVFR regions, ceilings 1,000 to 3,000 feet, visibility 3 to 5 miles, are shown by a non-hatched area outlined by a smooth line. Areas of VFR, no ceiling or ceiling greater than 3,000 feet, and visibility greater than 5 miles, are not outlined. Weather depiction charts show a modified station model that provides sky conditions in the form of total sky cover, cloud height or ceiling, weather and obstructions to visibility, but does not include wind or pressure readings like the surface analysis chart. A bracket symbol to the right of the station indicates the observation was made by an automated station. A radar summary chart is a graphically depicted collection of radar weather reports, SDs. The chart is published hourly at 35 minutes past the hour. It displays areas of precipitation as well as information regarding the characteristics of the precipitation. The radar summary chart is a valuable tool for pre-flight planning. It does, however, contain several limitations for the usage of the chart. This chart depicts only areas of precipitation. It will not show areas of clouds and fog with no appreciable precipitation or the height of the tops and bases of the clouds. Radar summary charts are a depiction of current precipitation and should be used in conjunction with the current METAR and weather forecasts. A radar summary chart includes 1. No information. If information is not reported, the chart will say NA. If no echoes are detected, the chart will say NE. 2. Precipitation intensity contours. Intensity can be described as one of six levels and is shown on the chart by three contour intervals. 3. Height of tops. The heights of the echo tops are given in hundreds of feet MSL. 4. Movement of cells. Individual cell movement is indicated by an arrow pointing in the direction of movement. The speed of movement in knots is the number at the top of the arrowhead. LM indicates little movement. 5. Type of precipitation. The type of precipitation is marked on the chart using specific symbols. These symbols are not the same as used on the METAR charts. 6. Echo configuration. Echoes are shown as being areas, cells, or lines. 7. Weather watches. Severe weather watch areas for tornadoes and severe thunderstorms are depicted by boxes outlined with heavy dashed lines. Significant weather prognostic charts are available for low-level significant weather from the surface to flight level 240, 24,000 feet, also referred to as the 400 millibar level, and high-level significant weather from flight level 250 to flight level 600, 25,000 to 60,000 feet. The primary concern of this discussion is the low-level significant weather prognostic chart. The low-level chart comes in two forms. 
the 12 and 24 hour forecast chart, and the 36 and 48 hour surface forecast chart. The first chart is a four panel chart that includes 12 and 24 hour forecasts for significant weather and surface weather. Charts are issued four times a day at 0000 Zulu, 0600 Zulu, 1200 Zulu, and 1800 Zulu. The valid time for the chart is printed on the lower left corner of each panel. The upper two panels show forecast significant weather, which may include non-convective turbulence, freezing levels, and IFR or MVFR weather. Areas of moderate or greater turbulence are enclosed in dashed lines. Numbers within these areas give the height of the turbulence in hundreds of feet MSL. Figures below the line show the anticipated base, while figures above the line show the top of the zone of turbulence. Also shown on this panel are areas of VFR, IFR, and MVFR. IFR areas are enclosed by solid lines, MVFR areas are enclosed by scalloped lines, and the remaining unenclosed area is designated VFR. Zigzag lines and the letters SFC indicate freezing levels in that area are at the surface. Freezing level height contours for the highest freezing level are drawn at 4,000 foot intervals with dashed lines. The lower two panels show the forecast surface weather and depicts the forecast locations and characteristics of pressure systems, fronts, and precipitation. Standard symbols are used to show fronts and pressure centers. Direction of movement of the pressure center is depicted by an arrow. The speed in knots is shown next to the arrow. In addition, areas of forecast precipitation and thunderstorms are outlined. Areas of precipitation that are shaded indicate at least one half of the area is being affected by the precipitation. Unique symbols indicate the type of precipitation and the manner in which it occurs. Prognostic charts are an excellent source of information for pre-flight planning. However, this chart should be viewed in light of current conditions and specific local area forecasts. The 36 and 48 hour significant weather prognostic chart is an extension of the 12 and 24 hour forecast. It provides information regarding surface weather forecasts and includes a discussion of the forecast. This chart is issued twice a day. It typically contains forecast positions and characteristics of pressure patterns, fronts, and precipitation. An example of a 36 and 48 hour surface prognostic chart is shown above. Although ATC systems cannot always detect the presence or absence of clouds, they can often determine the intensity of a precipitation area. But the specific character of that area, snow, rain, hail, virga, etc., cannot be determined. For this reason, ATC refers to all weather areas displayed on ATC radar scopes as precipitation. ARTCC facilities normally use a weather and radar processor, WARP, to display a mosaic of data obtained from multiple NEXRAD sites. There is a time delay between actual conditions and those displayed to the controller. The precipitation data on the ARTCC controller's display could be up to six minutes old. The warp processor is only used in ARTCC facilities. All ATC facilities using radar weather processors with the ability to determine precipitation intensity describe the intensity to pilots as light, moderate, heavy, or extreme. When the warp is not available, a second system, the narrowband air route surveillance radar, ARSR, can display two distinct levels of precipitation intensity that will be described to pilots as moderate and heavy to extreme. ATC facilities that cannot display the intensity levels of precipitation due to equipment limitations will describe the location of the precipitation area by geographic position or position relative to the aircraft. Since the intensity level is not available, the controller will state intensity unknown. ATC radar is not able to detect turbulence. Generally, turbulence can be expected to occur as the rate of rainfall or intensity of precipitation increases. 
Turbulence associated with greater rates of rainfall precipitation will normally be more severe than any associated with lesser rates of rainfall precipitation. Turbulence should be expected to occur near convective activity even in clear air. Thunderstorms are a form of convective activity that implies severe or greater turbulence. Operation within 20 miles of thunderstorms should be approached with great caution as the severity of turbulence can be much greater than the precipitation intensity might indicate. To the extent possible, controllers will issue pertinent information on weather and assist pilots in avoiding such areas when requested. Many aircraft manufacturers now include satellite weather services with new electronic flight display, EFD, and multifunction display, MFD, weather systems. EFDs give a pilot access to many of the satellite weather services available. Above are the weather products available to pilots, some of which include graphical NEXRAD data, graphical METAR data, SIGMETs, AIRMETs, graphical lightning strikes, temporary flight restrictions, and more. Pilots must be familiar with any EFD or MFD used and the satellite weather products available on the display. The information displayed using a satellite weather link is near real-time, but should not be thought of as instantaneous, up-to-date information. Each type of weather display is stamped with the age information on the MFD. The time is referenced from Zulu when the information was assembled at the ground station. The age should not be assumed to be the time when the FIS received the information from the satellite. Two types of weather are displayed on the screen, current weather and forecast data. Current information is displayed by an age, while the forecast data has a data stamp, shown above. Above is an example of a NEXRAD display on a PFD. The NEXRAD system is comprised of a series of 159 Weather Surveillance Radar 1988 Doppler WSR-88D sites situated throughout the United States as well as selected overseas sites. The individual agencies that have control over the system are the National Weather Service, Air Force Weather Agency, AFWA, and the FAA. NEXRAD radar produces two levels of products, Level 2 and Level 3. All NEXRAD Level 2 data products are available through the National Climatic Data Center, NCDC. Level 2 data consists of the three meteorological base data quantities, reflectivity, mean radial velocity, and spectrum width. There are 41 products routinely available through the NCDC. Level 3 graphic products are available as digital images, color hard copy, grayscale hard copy, or acetate overlay copies. This information is then encoded and disseminated through the satellite weather system as well as other sources. NEXRAD Level 3 data for up to a 2,000 mile range can be displayed. It is important to realize that the radar image is not real time and can be up to 5 minutes old. At no time should the images be used as storm penetrating radar nor to navigate through a line of storms. The image's display should only be used as a reference. In addition to utilizing the soft keys to activate the NEXRAD display, the pilot also has the option of setting the desired range. It is possible to zoom in on a specific area of the display in order to gain a more detailed picture of the radar display. Although NEXRAD is a compilation of stations across the country, there can be abnormalities associated with the system. Some of the abnormalities are ground clutter, strobes and spurious radar data, sun strobes when the radar antenna points directly at the sun, interference from buildings or mountains which may cause shadows, and military aircraft which deploy metallic dust and may reflect the radar signature. In addition to the abnormalities listed, the NEXRAD system does have some specific limitations. The NEXRAD base reflectivity does not provide adequate information from which to determine cloud layers or type of precipitation with respect to hail versus rain. Therefore, a pilot may mistake rain for hail. 
In addition, the base reflectivity is sampled at the minimum antenna elevation angle. With this minimum angle, an individual site cannot depict high-altitude storms directly over the station. This will leave an area of null coverage if an adjacent site does not also cover the affected area. Also, the resolution of the displayed data will pose additional concerns when the range is decreased. The minimum resolution for next rad returns is 2 kilometers. This means that when the display range is zoomed in to approximately 10 miles, the individual square return boxes will be more prevalent. Each square will indicate the strongest display return within that 2 kilometer square area. AirMet SIGMET information is available for the displayed viewing range on the MFD. Some displays are capable of displaying weather information for a 2,000 mile range. AirMet SIGMETs are displayed by dashed lines on the map shown above. The legend box denotes the various colors used to depict the AirMets, such as icing, turbulence, IFR weather, mountain obscuration, as well as surface winds. The great advantage of the graphically displayed AirMet SIGMET boundary box is the pilot can see the extent of the area that the report covers. The pilot does not need to manually plot the points to determine the full extent of the coverage area. METARs can be displayed on the multifunction display. Each reporting station that has a METAR TAF available is depicted by a flag from the center of the airport symbol. Each flag is color-coded to depict the type of weather that is currently reported at that station. A legend is available to assist users in determining what each flag color represents. The graphical METAR display shows all available reporting stations within the set viewing range. By setting the range knob up to a 2,000-mile range, pilots can pan around the display map to check the current conditions of various airports along the route of flight. By understanding what each colored flag indicates, a pilot can quickly determine where weather patterns display marginal weather, IFR, or areas of VFR. These flags make it easy to determine weather at a specific airport should the need arise to divert from the intended airport of landing. While no weather forecast is guaranteed to be 100% accurate, pilots have access to a myriad of weather information on which to base flight decisions weather products available for pre-flight planning, to en route information received over the radio or via satellite link, provide the pilot with the most accurate and up-to-date information available. Each report provides a piece of the weather puzzle. Pilots must use several reports to get an overall picture and gain an understanding of the weather that will affect the safe completion of a flight. This concludes your introduction to Aviation Weather Services. We hope you learned a lot. Please help us spread the word about Pilot Training System, and we look forward to further servicing your flight training needs.